Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. ESCOM provided an outlook on the state of the system this week. Terence Greenman listened to the presentation and joins me to discuss some of the highlights. Hi, Terence. Hi, Chanel. There has been some stabilization in the system, but it does remain precarious. Yes, we had a really intensive period of load shedding in the last year. In fact, in ESCOM's last financial year, year to date, there have been 51 days of load shedding which is up from 31 in the previous financial year. And for 2021 as a whole, there's been over 1,770 gigawatt hours shed, which is a record and making it the worst ever year for load shedding. So the fact that there's been some stabilization in the last couple of months is a sort of grateful relief for everyone in South Africa. And it also came at a time when we've had a lot of rain. So now traditionally, there's been the wet coal problem with Eskom, but there was a lot of preparation ahead of this summer. And we know that it's been a very wet period up in the northeastern parts of the country with rain predicted for the rest of the summer too. So we'll have to see whether wet coal becomes a problem later on. But until now, it's been a fairly good summer in terms of managing that, that issue. Uh, but we're in a, a precarious uh, situation still. You know that Eskom has got the reliability maintenance program, so it's going to have about 10% of its uh, available capacity off for maintenance at any one time. And then the big swing factor is the, the unplanned losses. And that's really what's been pushing us over the edge into load shedding for the last few years, as the coal plant in particular uh, has become really unreliable. And, uh, you know, we see that in the form of the energy availability factor, which for the year to date, it's been around 62%, which is really dismal for the coal fleet. And there's no sign of an immediate recovery. And the consequence of that has been very high load shedding, as we mentioned earlier, as well as a lot of diesel usage for the OCGT plants. Eskom year to date has spent 5.5 billion rand on its own OCGT plants and has also made about 3 billion rands worth of purchases of uh, OCGT from the private Avon and the Deezer plants. So it's a massive amount of money, which isn't covered by the tariff uh, because it hasn't been seen as prudent expenditure and is way above budget. And uh, the period ahead, we know that Eskom at the NURSA hearings, where it's asking for a 20.5% tariff hike for this year, has indicated that it wants 6.5 billion rand to run its own OCGT plants. And there's also an element of purchases from the private OCGT plants for 2022-23. So that's really to accommodate this lower EAF from the coal fleet, as well as a lower than expected RPP purchases. As we know, there's been a number of delays. For instance, the risk mitigation program is very, very, very delayed. Uh, another deadline looks like it may come and go this week. So we're going to have a high capacity factor from the OCGT plant. And there'll be, it'll be interesting to see what the regulator does when it makes its determination around the allowable revenue, whether it allows Eskom to recover uh, its expected costs on the diesel or whether they see it as imprudent. If they do see it as imprudent, then there's going to be another financial burden on Eskom. Eskom is struggling to secure the money and to find the space and time to implement maintenance. Yes, you know, there was a lot of fanfare initially when the reliability team uh, maintenance program was announced and there was a expectation or hope that by about October last year, we would see a stabilization. And we didn't see that. We saw a really strong deterioration. And I think Eskom's now got its hands around how big the problem is, what the backlogs are. And uh, it really needs a lot of time and space, but especially money uh, to get these uh, projects going because it needs money upfront to do the upfront planning so that when the breaker is opened, they're able to move in straight away and do the maintenance that's required. And uh, really that's been a big impediment over the last couple of years. And we saw that 40 of the 84 outages that were initially planned for 2021, 2022 have been deferred. 28 of these have been deferred into the next financial year because there's just no way there's gonna be time and space to do this maintenance this, in this financial year. So this means the backlog is not being eaten into as quickly as it should be. And adding to that problem is this low EAF, which means that the plants that are available 
are going to have a higher energy utilization factor, which is going to lead to more wear and tear and more maintenance needs. So there's somewhat of a vicious cycle. And uh, I think the only way to, to really address this is to get the liquidity up early so that Eskim can plan for these maintenance outages. Some of them are very long duration. And to really get into these old plants to try and get them back to some sort of stable operating performance. But as we know, it's been really poor over the last couple of years, as reflected, as we said earlier, in the strongly declining energy availability factor from the coal fleet. And then added to it this year is that we know that the reliable nuclear uh, electricity from Kuburg is also affected because there's this long duration outage underway at Kuburg, one to refuel the units. So the first unit is off unit two, uh, but also to uh, invest in the steam generation technology that's needed for the life extension. Now Eskim's applied to, to extend the life of these plants. It is contentious, but with these, this 20 billion rand investment that will take place mostly during this year, there will be this potential to extend the life of the Kuburg plant well into the future. And, you know, but during this period where uh, Kuburg first two is down and then Kuburg one later in the year means we don't have that capacity fully available for the system, which makes the balance again tight. And then we obviously know there's a number of, of other incidents that have taken place. Uh, Madupi Unit 4, which blew, blew up that hydrogen explosion, and that's not going to be available. That needs to be repaired at a cost of 2.5 billion. And there have been a number of other incidents. So that there, there's these, these sort of full load losses that basically we have to accommodate for. And then because of the lack of maintenance, high levels of partial load losses that are only really going to be addressed once Eskim contractors can really get their hands into these power stations and start uh, cleaning up the mess. There's also the added threat of theft, vandalism and sabotage. Yes, you know, there was a lot of discussion last year around sabotage, especially around the, the Tabo incident where a pylon was cut. And that uh, complaint has been lodged with the SAPS and they are investigating uh, a claim of sabotage by Eskim at, at the moment. There was also an incident at Matimba where a power cord was uh, allowed to drop and it led to a trip uh, at the power station. So there's this issue of sabotage that, that sort of lingers over Eskom. But uh, really theft and vandalism, as we see on network industries generally in South Africa, price has been decimated. Transnet is losing so many kilometers of contact, overhead contact uh, cable every month, and it's leading to derailments. Eskom's are not immune from this, and they had more than 2,750 incidents last year. And they're having to spend a lot more money over and above their normal security budgets. They've now budgeted 48 million for this financial year. They've got 450 more security guards, boots on the ground. They've uh, invested uh, through the security companies in drones that have infrared cameras. And they've also got intelligent cameras to, to sort of give them early warnings. But this is a really big problem for South Africa's economic infrastructure. Uh, and it's not only Eskom, but as I said, it's cutting across all the network companies from Prasa and Transnet, and it's having a devastating impact on service provision. Do you think Eskom can avoid load shedding in 2022? As I said right at the beginning, I think it's precarious. You know, um, hopefully we won't go through the same intensity of load shedding that we saw in 2020 and now 2021. Uh, the start of 2022 looks better with unplanned losses coming down to the more than sort of 9,000 megawatt level. But as soon as it breaches the sort of 12,000 megawatt mark, and that happens quite regularly, uh, the system is very, very vulnerable to load shedding. And given the backlogs in the system, I think we can expect there are going to be periods where we're going to breach those sort of levels. And the sensitivities there for a number of days of load shedding, number of hours, stages of load shedding, goes up exponentially for every 1,000 megawatts that is lost to unplanned events. So at the moment, Eskom's um, planning uh, is to get through the rest of summer without load shedding and spending about half a billion rand on diesel to get us through to, to the end of summer. But you know, if there's any movement beyond that 12,000 megawatts of losses, uh, the likely scenario is there could be load shedding. 
Um, and if it gets to high levels like that 15,000 megawatt level that we saw during periods last year, then um, there's going to be intensity in the stages of load shedding will also be high. Uh, the use of OCGT, as I say, is contentious because it's expensive. But Eskom argues that at 9 Rand 50 for scheduled load shedding, the cost of the economy versus, say, about 3 Rand uh, or between 3 and 4 Rand to run the OCG plants. They argue it's prudent to run the OCG plants. But they're also saying that there's serious logistical constraints and that on a monthly basis, they can't really be spending more than 1.2 uh, billion Rand on diesel because it's just not possible to replenish the diesel at that rate. Uh, so if there are higher levels of unplanned losses, they're going to have to compensate uh, for the logistics as well as the financial constraints around diesel with load shedding. So I'm optimistic or that maybe the, the intensity of load shedding might be less than in 2020 and 2021. Uh, but I think avoiding load shedding entirely in 2022 is highly unlikely. Thank you. That's the second Take Show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News Daily Email Newsletter.